So the other kind of neural network that we have available in Flucoma is called the fluid MLP classifier, which you can see right here. And this is still an MLP, a multilayer perceptron, but now we're doing a different task with it. We're doing the task of classification. And this is different from regression in that the output that a classifier will give us is not some number of values that are in a continuous range. Instead, it will give us a category, a class, a label that it is predicting the input to be. In this example here, we're using the MLP classifier to classify between oboe sounds and trombone sounds. We're doing that through audio analysis. And so when we train this MLP classifier, rather than giving it two data sets, one of input values and one of output values, we're giving it a data set as an input, as inputs with the audio analyses in them. And the output is actually a fluid dot label set. And the label set is like a data set, although instead of holding data, it just holds labels. And in this case, my labels are actually uh, trombone or oboe, like the, the instrument that I'm classifying between. It works very similarly. Um, I'm going to play some sounds, some oboe multiphonics and some trombone tones. And then I'm gonna add these audio analyses to my data set. And then we'll train the neural network with that. And then it will make predictions. Uh, the audio analysis that I'm using in this case is called the is MFCCs, fluid.mfcc tilde here. MFCC stands for MEL frequency kepstrel coefficient, type of audio analysis that's often used for timbral description and timbral comparison. And since what we're doing here is trying to compare between or distinguish between uh, an oboe and a trombone, we're, we want to compare the timbres, right? We don't want to base our difference on pitch or on loudness or on something else because these instruments could both play loud or both play quiet or both play the same pitch. And so we want to focus on the timbral differences between these two sounds. And MFCCs is a good audio analysis for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play some sounds. And then while I am hearing my oboe sound and I see my audio analysis here as an oboe, I'm going to hit add point. Before I do that, I'll hit this oboe message to store into this pack object that I am in fact going to be adding oboe examples. I won't add as many, I think we'll get away with just a few. Now I'll leave the rest for testing. And then for the trombones, I'll say trombone and I'll play these. those for testing. So now if we look, we have a bunch that are labeled oboe and a bunch that are labeled trombone and their corresponding audio analyses here. Looks like I added a total of 72 data points, including my oboe and my trombone. So now if we train, here there's a nice little um, plot so we can see how the error changes over time. Looks like it is quite low, quite fast but it came down from a decent height. So we can see that it probably has learned pretty well. And then I'll turn on this QMetro to have it just constantly make predictions. Right now it's predicting oboe, or sorry, it's predicting trombone. Of course, we're not hearing a trombone, but the neural network only knows about oboes and trombones. It will only ever predict one of those two things. So rather than having it make predictions while there's actually silence happening. I'm actually going to use this uh, fluid loudness measure here to um, just not have it make predictions unless the loudness is above a certain threshold. In this case, negative 40 decibels. So now if I play these, you can see that here it's predicting oboe. Oh, it's getting a little confused there. Let's see how it does on the rest of these. 
Still thinks this is an elbow. Thinks that all of these are elbows. Okay, this one is a little hard for it. Let's try these trombone sounds. No, it thinks these are trombone. So this type of classification um, using the MLP classifier, uh, you can use you know as many as many classes as you want. You don't have to use just two. And building the data set this way, you use the data set for the inputs, the audio analysis, and the label set for the outputs. And you can see that it actually reports out to you the label itself, trombone here. It gives you the label that it has learned to predict. Uh, there's a few other nuances about this patch, you know, the, the way that this uh, is assigned here with the add label message, um, the way that I'm automatically banging this predict point to make predictions. So all of the Flucoma objects have FFT settings, uh, you know, all of them where it's appropriate, I should say, have the attribute FFT settings, and you can specify the um, window size the hop size, and also the FFT size within the window itself. So you can really get nuanced control over how the audio analysis is happening. There's also, I'll show you that on the Glucoma Learn page, if you go to the, I think it's this one, the buff STFT object, it talks about some of these things. So it talks about window size, hop size, right on the Flucoma page here. Uh, and some of the issues that are could be involved with these different parameters and why you might need to adjust them. And then also there's a page just about the Fourier transform here that talks about like, what is the difference? What is a DFT? What is an FFT? What is an STFT? Uh, talks about the sort of way in which the bins of the FFT are handled and this sort of stuff. So this is a great place to go and look at that. Um, and you know, there's tons of resources on the internet about this stuff. You can check out all this stuff. These are curated by us. So they, you know, are, are good resources. Um, also this one we've tried to create in a way that is very, um, musician, musician oriented, right? So we're not getting too technical too quickly and really trying to keep things in terms of like how musicians think about music and sound. So check this one out first or check out whatever you want. These are cool too. So what if both are playing? So this is a common question. And the short answer is that the neural network, in this case, the way that we're using the MLP classifier here, it doesn't give you a like both category. It really has these categories that are categorical in that it will only ever say trombone or oboe. If you do want to identify both, there are some things you could do um, you could play both, give it a bunch of examples that are labeled as both and have it try to learn to identify just the oboe, just the trombone or identify the category both. Yeah, so if you're looking to detect silence, I would not suggest using a neural network because there are tools that, machine listening tools that do it very well. I would actually recommend the fluid.amp gate because what amp gate will give you you can specify, there's some uh, settings here for how it actually computes the, um, the amplitude gate signal, but it will give you a one if there is sound and a zero if there's not sound. So it's a very simple, like if the sound is above this threshold, like give me a one, if it's not, give me a zero. Um, and you actually saw what I did here was I just did you know, a fluid loudness uh, and I just say, if the value is above negative 40 decibels, you know this will output a one for me or if it's not, it'll output a zero. So the machine listening tools are what you would want to go, go to in that case. 